My wife recently visited the Salvation Army store where people donate stuff that's still good and the proceeds from the sales go to help the poor. And she found this, a shelf for the kitchen where she wants to put cans of tea on here. The only problem is the mounts are missing. There's nothing here to really mount to, just these slots. That's where a 3D printer comes in. I 3D printed two custom inserts that go in these slots and have a hole and a slide for a screw. I'll show you how I designed this in Tinkercad and printed it out on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. I opened up Tinkercad and I'm going to use the new beta version. I'm not as familiar with this as the older version, but I've got to learn it. And uh, first thing I did was change the name to Shelf Inserts. Then I brought in a box element and added the ruler. Now there's a few things I don't like about this beta and the first one is that big shape block. I wish I could make that smaller. But anyway, I resized the block to 50 millimeters long, 11.3 millimeters wide, and 13 millimeters tall. Now those two are important so they fit the slot. The 50 millimeters is there plus these end caps I got to put on it. So I brought in a round roof piece and I need to flip this up on its side so it's standing up. So I'll grab the rotation tool here. And if you hold the shift key, it'll jump in 45 degree increments. So I get it to 90 degrees. Now I need to turn it 90 degrees again so it lines up at the end of the block. Once I get that, I'll just slide it over here. And now I need to reshape it in the proper width. 11.3, and then I'm only making it 5 millimeters deep. And now I need to, oh, um, let's see, same 13 millimeters tall. And now I need to duplicate this. And where is the duplicate? There it is. So I click duplicate and now I've got a new one. And then I'm going to flip it. So I want a mirror version of it. So now I've got one for the other side that's the exact same dimensions. So I'll just slide that guy over. Try to line it up a little bit here and line this one up. And then uh, let's zoom in here. How do I do this? Here we go. Zoom selection. So that zooms into the piece I'm working on. And then I'll zoom back out a little bit. So now what I want to do is actually line these guys up. So if I, oh, check this out. They're, they're below. When I flipped them, they went below the surface. So I need to fix that. So I'll just set their offset. Um, no, that's not it. It's over here to the right. There it is. So I'm at, instead of minus 5, I make it 0. Now they're all in the same flat plane. Now I want to grab them all, and I'm going to use the align tool. And I'm going to line them in line in the, I guess that's the X direction. Now I'm manually going to move these in, but I want to do it real small increments so it just barely touches. So I'll zoom in and then just see how it just overlaps the red, the blue and the uh, red overlap. Now I'll come over here and do it the same way. And setting that to the 0.1 millimeter movement makes this a lot easier. So once I get that side set, yep, there we go. So now I've got the basic shape that's going to fit that slot in the shelf. So the next step is to basically group these guys together. So I'll just grab them all if it'll let me here. What is going on? Let's grab them. There we go. Grab them all. And I want to group them together. There we go. Group. And then we have one solid block that will fit perfectly or should fit perfectly in the shelf. Now what I need to do is actually make a duplicate of this guy. Um, so let's see, go up here to duplicate. And I want to make that a hole. Because this is going to take away the material. This is actually going to make a uh, insert inside of it. And I'll downsize that, but it's hard to see. So let's drag this guy out. Um, you know what, I'm just going to do this dimensionally. The first thing I need to do is raise it up so it's 3 millimeters off the bottom. That gives me a 3 millimeter flat surface that the screws will go into. And let's line these up so I can see how they look. So I can see that I need to squeeze this in a little bit. And I know the block is 11.3 millimeters, so if I go 8.3 millimeters, that should give me a 1.5 millimeter wall on both sides. So I'll do that and then realign these guys so they're centered again. And once I got that centered, that looks pretty good. I think I can probably just group these together and that'll give me my opening. So let's grab these guys. Let's see, hold on here. Okay, there, grab them and group. And there we go. 
So I took that section out and it's got a three millimeter bottom. So this is looking good. So now I need to add the hole for the screw and then the slot that the screw will slide into. So I'm gonna do this very simple, just bring in another block. And this is just gonna be taking away material, but I do want the proper sizes. So I know I want a five millimeter slot. And width-wise, 20 millimeters is fine. Let's just slide this top wall down. Uh, that's good enough. Um, doesn't have to be exact. And then we bring in a cylinder. And this I need to be nine millimeters so the screw head can fit into it. And I've measured this on the screws, so I know it's the right size. Now I need to align these two guys. Um, I could drag it like that, but it doesn't want to seem to work for me. So I'll just uh, grab both of these, and I'll use the align tool again. This is probably a tool I use more than anything else. And now I've got them where I want them. And let's drop this cylinder down so it's about the same height. really doesn't matter, but... I don't know why, but this just looks better to me. So now I'll grab those two, group them together, and this is going to be my hole and slot. Make it into a hole. Uh, slide this over to the insert by using the align tool. I'll just align the two. It wasn't easy. It's easier than moving it. So now I got them both, but I need to drop that hole a little bit lower so it's going to take the material out of that bottom wall. So I'll just grab that piece, grab the arrow, drop it down so it goes through the bottom of this thing. And this is looking really good. It's it's centered now. It's, it's centered in both directions going through. So now I could group these guys together and it'll form the insert that I'm, I'm trying to make. I'm just about done here. So I'll just grab all those, group together, and there it is. There's the insert. So that should fit into the slot on the shelf. The screw will go into the big hole and then slide across on the uh, rectangular slot. So now I just need to download this as a .stl file and send it to Simplify3D for slicing. So I just click on Export, STL, and it's ready to go. I loaded the file into Simplify3D, but I needed two of these, so I clicked on Edit, Duplicate Models, Copy 1, center and arrange and I had my two units. So now I need to choose my profile. I'm going to use the $154 cheap CTC printer because I want this thing rough so it fits tightly in the slot. So I did a 0.3 layer height, uh, no additional items, just 30% infill, 50 degree on the bed, 225 degrees on the hot end and I'm gonna print this at 50 millimeters per second. I'm using an inland filament so I need a little bit higher temperature. Sliced it, they look good, and it said it would only take 36 minutes and 3 meters of plastic. So it's off to the cheap $154 printer. And here's the time lapse. And this thing, it's got a little nerd floating around in there, but overall it's pretty really good. I didn't use a cooling fan because I wanted the edges to be rough, and they did come out rough. But not as rough as I thought they'd be, but still. The prints are decent. Um, they, they don't have to be beautiful or nothing, but dimensionally they look pretty good so now let's see if the screw fits and it does and then fits the slot so the design worked out perfectly now I just need to install these in the shelf so as I push this in I can feel at the side the ribs on this print are exactly what I wanted it's gripping tightly but I am going to use some glue I'll just use a little super glow so between the ribs and this glue this thing should be perfectly tight inside the slot and I want to make sure that I put the same direction so when I'm sliding these I'm sliding in the same direction so on one the hole is to the inside the other one the hole is to the outside so I pushed it down until it's flush and then just wiped off the excess glue and then let this dry while that's drying I went to the wall marked where the hole should be and I used these plastic screw and anchors and then fed the mounting screw into that and got the dimensions right and then I was ready to slide the shelf in place first pop it into the holes and then slide it over and it was fitting tight enough I just had to tap it and then the T cans go on on top of that and there we have it it's installed the way she wanted it there you have it another practical use of my 3d printers I love it when 3d printers can solve a problem like this especially something around the house 
So now I just need to paint this and clean it up because it's got a few nicks and scratches and then I'll get it back on the wall. If you like practical prints like this, check out some of my other videos. I do a lot of that kind of stuff. And if you like what I'm doing here and you want to support the channel, a dollar a month to Patreon it goes a long way. And if nothing else, please subscribe. Click on my little logo there. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.